Good morning and welcome to the Council of the Americas. Uh, we're really pleased that you've all joined us uh, virtually this morning for what promises to be a fascinating program with Lucas Ferraz, uh, Secretary of Foreign Trade at the Ministry of Economy of Brazil. I'm Steve Liston, uh, Senior Director at the Council with responsibility for managing the our trade program. So it's a great pleasure for me to be able to moderate this program under the auspices of the Trade Advisory Group. I'm pleased that both Susan Siegel, uh, President and CEO of the Americas Society and Council of the Americas, and Eric Farnsworth, Vice President and Head of our Washington office, can be with us today as well. Uh, we are uh, also pleased to have Brazil's Ambassador to the United States, Nestor Forster, with us, uh, a good friend of the Council. Ambassador Forster has graciously agreed to make some remarks at the closing of our program today. Secretary Ferraz uh, will be making some introductory remarks and then we will be taking questions via the chat function. So please send me questions uh, directly via chat and I'll put your question in the queue. Uh, please identify yourself and your affiliation if you would like me to recognize those. Uh, a reminder that this program is on the record and will be posted to our website within the next few days. Uh, President Bolsonaro has led enormous changes in Brazil and nowhere more than in the trade arena. When I was at the US Embassy in Brasilia over a decade ago, uh, it would have been hard to imagine the protocol on trade rules and transparency that the US and Brazilian governments negotiated and signed last year. Uh, so what's next? Uh, as countries begin to emerge from our pandemic year, trade will again be top of the agenda. And as one of the world's top exporters, Brazil has a larger stake than most in the global and regional trade discussions that are once again underway. We are uh, really pleased to be able to host Lucas Ferraz to, uh, today as Brazil's top official working exclusively on foreign trade. He has agreed to give us some insights into Brazil's trade agenda with the United States in the region and with global trading partners. Uh, Secretary Ferraz is an engineer by training who also holds a PhD in economics from Getulio Vargas uh, Foundation in Sao Paulo. It sounds like a dangerous combination actually. Uh, he has worked uh, on international trade for the World Bank and UNCTAD and is one of Brazil's coordinators uh, for its WTO chair. So we have a true international trade specialist with us today and I hope you will take advantage of this great opportunity by engaging him with some great questions. Before your questions though, let me turn the microphone over to the secretary for some opening remarks. Secretary Fras, thank you for joining us today. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, for, for the kind introduction and thank you, President Susan Siegel, for having me in this panel today. It's a, it's a pleasure being here in this conversation with the Council. I'm very pleased to be sharing this moment with Ambassador Foster. Good morning to all guests joining us. I would like to start by saying that foreign trade is one of the drivers of a broad set of structural reforms going on in the Brazilian economy. And it has the power to enhance efficiency and productivity of firms and ensure the sustainability of the country's long-term economic growth. In this sense, since 2019, when we took office, one of the priorities of the minister, for the Minister of Economy has been to increase Brazil's insertion in international trade and in the global economy as a whole. In order to do that, we have divided our efforts into three main pillars to your better understanding. The first one is the reduction of non-tariff barriers to trade diminishing bureaucracy, facilitating foreign trade, and fostering uh, the efficiency of government's intervention on exports and import processes. A study published by the OECD in cooperation with the Brazilian government demonstrated that reforms related to the bureaucracy of foreign trade in the country can reduce the cost of private operators by up to 14.5%. Therefore, According to some estimations, the removal or simplification of time delays in export and import procedures in Brazil could potentially bring greater economic gains than those resulting from the reduction of import tariffs. I would like 
I would be glad to give you more details on this topic in the next, in the next opportunity, as our efforts in this regard are enormous and comprise several initiatives, such as the implementation of Brazil's single window program, the elimination of unnecessary import licenses, and the streamlining of several other procedures. The second pillar I'd like to highlight is our work on the reform of Brazil's import tariff structure. Just to give you an example, last week, the Brazilian Chamber of Foreign Trade called CAMEX approved an across the board reduction of 10% in import tariffs on capital and ICT goods. It goes without saying how important the imports of those goods are for our country's productivity growth especially in the manufacturing sector. As you, as you all may be familiar with, Brazil is part of a custom union, Mercosur, which has a common external tariff. Since its establishment in 1995, Mercosur common external tariff has never been the subject of a comprehensive reform inside the bloc. In our view, it is important to bring the tariff structure of Mercosur closer to the levels practiced in inter internationally for a, grad a gradual, transparent, and predictable reduction of its nominal values. Technical and political discussions are currently going on among Bercosu members towards establishing a tariff structure that is more efficient and adequate to promote a greater insertion of Mercosur countries in international trade especially in global value chains. We hope to conclude the negotiations of this very comprehensive reform by the end of the coming year. In the meantime, as for the case of capital and ICT goods, Brazil has already suggested an immediate across the board reduction of 10% for all the other 9,000 tariff lines included in our common external tariff. As I said, this transformation is part of a broad set of structural reforms being carried out by the federal government since 2019, such as the pension reform, the new regulatory frameworks on natural gas and sanitation services in the country, the central bank independence, just to mention a few. It's worth mentioning that the tax reform, as well as the, the administrative reform, are expected to be approved by the end of this year. All of those reforms will contribute to improve the business environment in Brazil and are expected to potentialize the benefits of trade openness in our country. This leads us to the third pillar of our trade agenda, which is the negotiation of new and state-of-the-art free trade agreements, which I understand to be our main topic of discussion today. In this context, our aim is to promote the opening of foreign markets to Brazilian exports and to allow greater access by national economic agents of cutting edge inputs and new technologies. In addition, as in the case of the reform of our common external tariff, the formalization of new trade agreements are expected to increase competition in our domestic market, creating new incentives for innovation and more modern and competitive production process, while enabling Brazilian consumers to have greater access to cheaper products of a larger variety and of a higher quality. The removal of import tariffs on traded goods, together with the flexibilization of rules of origin, favor the fragmentation of production and a greater integration of the Brazilian economy into international supply chains. In addition, the agreements provide the greater openness for greater openness, transparency, and legal certainty in the markets for services, investments, and government procurement, as well as the reduction of non-tariff barriers and consolidation of the agenda of good regulatory practices, in addition to the establishment of modern disciplines in the area of trade facilitation, intellectual property, digital economy, among other topics. Those those are key drivers for connection into global value chains and trading value added in general in the 21 in the 21st century. I must emphasize that the conclusion of the negotiations with the European Union was a milestone for Brazilian foreign trade and that the Brazilian government and, and for the Brazilian government. 
creating one of the largest free trade areas in the world, integrating Brazil over 25% of world's GDP and with 780 million consumers. We are committed now to move forward with all the stages left of the legal scrubbing process as soon as possible until the entry into force of this very important agreement. We have similar expectations when it comes to the Mercosur agreement with the European Free Trade Association, the so-called EFTA. Another significant progress was with the United States via the Protocol on Trade and Transparency, resulting in three annexes comprising state-of-the-art provisions on customs administration and trade facilitation, good regulatory practice, and anti-corruption. The United States is a significant commercial partner for Brazil. In terms of bilateral trade, it is Brazil's second major importer and exporter. Based on data published by the Secretariat of Foreign Trade in 2019, trade between the two countries represented almost $60 billion. In 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, numbers decreased as expected, and trade between the two countries added up to $45.6 billion. In the last couple of years, we have had a unique opportunity to enhance our bilateral trade agenda. In 2020, the commercial dialogue, which I co-preside, turned out to be a relevant tool for to foster bilateral trade flows between Brazil and the United States by exchanging best practices in regulations identifying and seeking to remove technical barriers to trade, reducing bureaucracy and, cut, and cutting red tapes at the border. Moreover, the commercial dialogue paved the way to the negotiations of this non-tariff barrier protocol under the ATAC mechanism, promoting trade and economic development for Brazil and the USA, with non-trivial positive externalities to all economies we trade with. I would like to highlight that the Brazilian government is, here, is really interested in continuing to advance this trade dialogue with the USA, perhaps as a stepping stone to negotiating a comprehensive free trade agreement in the coming future. In spite of the fact that according to Mercosur rules, the negotiation of trade agreements involving trading goods are carried out jointly by Mercosur members, there is no such restriction, for instance, when it comes to the, the negotiation of services, investments, and government procurement, just to mention a few. It is also worth mentioning that Mercosur countries have been exploiting new and more flexible modalities of negotiations, such as, the case, such as in the case of the agreement between Mercosur and South Korea, where Argentina decided not to participate in the ongoing negotiations of goods and rules of origin. I'm also very confident about ongoing negotiations with Canada, South Korea, Singapore, and Lebanon. Face-to-face -face negotiations rounds scheduled for April 2020 did not occur due to the measures to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. However, technical groups have met at the intersectional level through video conference. In parallel, we have been seeking to expand Mercosur network of trade agreements for new negotiating frontiers, such as the ones with Indonesia and Vietnam. These two Mercosur negotiations are still in their exploratory dialogue stages. The Secretary of Foreign Trade will launch wide public consultations for these negotiations soon, aiming at collecting inputs from the Brazilian society and the trade community in general. Geographically closer, Mercosur countries seek to establish free trade agreements with Central American and Caribbean countries, currently awaiting official reactions over the proposal submitted by Mercosur in 2020. These agreements are expected to focus on market access of goods with a high coverage of products. Since, since 2019, the private sector reinforced their interest in these negotiations through several letters sent to the Ministry of Economy and in surveys carried out by the National Confederation of Industry, CNI. We are well aware of its importance, especially to Brazil's manufacturing sector. 
Lastly, but not less important, Brazil formalized in 2020 the decision to join WTO's Government Procurement Agreement, the so-called GPA, representing a market of nearly $1.7 trillion per year, the GPA is an important plurilateral treaty that has 20 signatory parties corresponding to 48 WTO member countries. The objective is to open up the public procurement market for its members through commitments in the areas of transparency and non-discrimination between suppliers. Just last month, we submitted Brazil's first offer to the GPA members which was very well received by the parties, according to the reactions gathered at, in the last GPA committee meeting. For the first time in history, Brazil included subnational level entities in a public procurement negotiation. With the current offer, we are linking to the GPA, we are adding to the GPA a potential market of up to $145 billion per year. This represents an increase in 80% of the total GPA procurement, procurement market. Brazil is aiming at a smooth and swift accession process, and we are not sparing any efforts from our side. We hope to seize this momentum and ensure the first participation of a Latin American country as a party to the GPA. We strongly believe the agreement will benef benefit public administration, increasing competition between suppliers, lowering costs, and promoting a greater efficiency in government bidding process in general. In addition, the agreement, the addition, addition, the agreement will benefit Brazilian exports of goods and services due to the significant, the significant opportunities arising abroad. As you may see, there are, there are great ongoing new opportunities to expand Brazil's network of international trade agreements. I want to seize this, mo this important moment to say that I'm very optimistic about our foreign trade agenda for 2021, despite all challenges brought about by this pandemic. I look forward to hearing your comments and questions, so I will stop here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary. That was uh, incredible. If anyone doubted what I said at the opening, that Brazil's trade policy has been completely revamped and changed and uh, enormous things are going on. I think you just uh, showed uh, why that statement is completely true. Uh, very ambitious trade agenda. It's not going to leave you much time to uh, to take any time off, I don't think, uh, in the coming year. So, uh, but thank you for that. Uh, a reminder that if you would like to ask a question, please uh, send me a chat and I will put it into the queue. Um, while we're waiting, I have a, a like 60 questions, but I'm not going to ask them all. Um, let me just ask one to start about about the U.S. Let's let's just start there. Um, what is what do you see as possible next steps uh, toward potentially a comprehensive free trade agreement? Are you getting signs that there's interest there from your your counterparts from early discussions you've had? Obviously, the, the U.S. Trade representative was just confirmed very recently, but um, but what are you what are you seeing? And specifically, two areas I think that um, we that are are of specific sort of big question marks or concerns are steel with the uh, the steel trade between the two countries and agricultural trade. And I wonder if you have any thoughts on on those uh, two areas with regard to the United States. So thank you, Steve. Uh, as I said in my presentation, I think we had we made a lot of progress, you know, in our bilateral trade relations uh, in, in in over the two the two last years. Uh, uh, the protocol we signed with the United States uh, is a very important protocol, even though it's a non-tariff barrier protocol. Uh, as I said, non-tariff barriers nowadays are in in, in, in many cases even more significant than tariff barriers. So we believe this protocol, especially in the case of trade facilitation and best regulatory practice, will foster our bilateral trade with the United States and it will have significant impacts, not only for our bilateral trade relationship, but also uh, for our trade relationship with trade partners in general, because most of the measures, if you, if you look at the provisions in, those, in this protocol, 
most of the provisions are horizontal by nature. So it will have only not only significant impacts for the bilateral trade relation, as I said, but also for our trade relations with the rest of the world. Uh, 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 when we uh, took office in 2019, you know, uh, the, the, bi the bilateral dialogue, you know, the bilateral dialogue, I mean, the, 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 the bilateral mechanisms that we had with the United States, uh, the so-called bilateral dialogue, as, a whole, as, as, as properly said, and also the ATAC mechanism, they were basically, you know, uh, 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 inactivated. So uh, what we did was uh, uh, just in the beginning, just in January of 2019, we met with our America counterparts and we took the decision to restart, you know, to, to, re to press, as we said, to press the restart button in our bilateral trade relations. And we immediately uh, reactivated those two uh, very important uh, mechanisms. So, as I said, we made a lot of progress uh, in, in, the, in the field of non-tariff barriers. We negotiated a very important protocol, a state-of-the-art protocol, in basically 11 months, which was really an achievement. And we hope uh, to continue this very fruitful bilateral relationship with the new government, the way the current government, the United States, this new government. Uh, we have already had some conversations with our American counterparts. Uh, the signs that we received from, from our counterparts, I must say, were very positive, were very pragmatic. They would like they reinforce uh, the, the will, their will of continuing this dialogue, you know, of, uh, let's say, going deeper uh, in these two mechanisms, uh, and maybe in the future, uh, I cannot say, I, 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 I speak from my, from my side, not from the side of the United States, of course, but from our side, uh, we are open to negotiate a more ambitious, pro, uh, a more ambitious, let's say, a free trade agreement with the United States, uh, if it's possible. If it's not possible, another very, let's say, uh, 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 important potential ave avenue, uh, let's say, of uh, increasing our bilateral trade relations would be perhaps to add another ax another annex to this protocol, to the protocol that we have. Because the protocol that we signed with the United States, it contains three annexes, but it can be extended to include more annexes. So one idea, one possible idea, and I think the United States is very, let's say, uh, sympathetic, you know, with this uh, 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 would be very sympathetic with this proposition, would be to negotiate a new annex, for instance, in digital trade. I must say that Brazil is ready for this. This is very important, you know, uh, uh, to, our, to our economy. We have been negotiating uh, or have been very engaged in the negotiations of the plurilateral on e-commerce at the WTO. Uh, we have been very much aligned with the uh, United States positions. You know, we, uh, when it comes to this protocol, so we believe that this would be uh, perhaps uh, an alternative that could be could uh, uh, implement uh, um, in the short term, and perhaps in in the long term we can uh, discuss uh, uh, a more ambitious free trade agreement, including good services and all other topics uh, uh, of state of the art agreements. Thank you for that. Uh, let's. You've answered one of the questions that came in on digital trade. I think that's you know that's a huge topic that everyone would love to see addressed bilaterally and regionally. It's clearly the future. We all learned over the last year that it is where where the future is going. Um, a question uh, uh, sticking on the topic of U.S. trade. A question has come in uh, about. Uh, express services. Do you see that as something that that can be included uh, going forward in terms of bilateral trade? And then any comments on the agriculture and do those have to wait a comprehensive agreement? Agriculture, steel, um, or, or discussion can discussions go on outside of the, the of sort of a trade agreement realm? Uh, I'm sorry, you you asked about services. If I'm not mistaken, express express services, particularly express delivery. Yes, this is a yeah. Those are very important topics. Uh, we have uh, uh, this is of course not uh, 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 something that we can, that I can have a position you know by myself because we need to discuss this you know with our federal revenue services. 
yeah but i can tell you i can anticipate that we have been talking to them with them yeah uh, in this regard we would like you know to facilitate this kind of uh, of services in brazil we need this is, we think this is very important but this is of course a very sensitive topic uh, sensitive issue in our economy uh, but we are positive we can make some progress on this yeah uh, regarding uh, agriculture i think the best way you know this is also of course very sensitive in the case of the united states yeah brazil is a very competitive economy when it comes to the exports of agricultural products we know this is a very sensitive issue for the united states and we believe the best way to discuss those issues you know those sensitive issues agriculture you know uh, uh, steel that you mentioned you know is also very sensitive we understand this but the best way to discuss this is uh, in my in my opinion uh, uh, in the in the in the context of a more ambitious free trade agreement because if you are discussing you know a more ambitious free trade agreement agreement it is easier to accommodate those sensibilities because you can make concessions in other sectors in order to gain market access in other in, in others yeah so it's much easier to discuss uh, instead of a tet for tet you know negotiation just uh, to include those very important and sensitive topics inside you know the framework of for more ambitious negotiations that's my position yeah well well understood of course uh, much easier to deal with those in a broader in a broader agreement and we'll hope that we get there because um, it, it really would be significant to have that bilateral agreement um i want to ask one more question on us brazil trade and then and then go a little bit broader uh we can come back to it but one more question that that's come in is, is sort of what changes have you seen over the five months we're five months into this new protocol have you seen any changes have has access to goods uh both from the us to brazil and from brazil uh, to the us has there been any change uh, it, because of these rules changes good regulatory practices are you seeing the effects of that uh both in brazil and in the united states well uh um uh, let me let me fair you know uh, let me try to be fair with in, in our case especially uh because as you probably remember in 2019 brazil approved the so-called uh, law of economic freedom so since 2019 brazil has been made ma making a lot of progress when it comes to uh, uh, improve the quality of government intervention in our economy which of course includes regulation trade facilitation with trade facilitation we have the we are implementing a very important program, the single window program. It's uh, it's already very well advanced. We hope to 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 conclude, you know, the implementation of this program by the end of the coming year, which will, by the way, reduce time delays in Brazilian ports from 19 days to nine days, which is a huge, you know, uh, 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 difference, which is a huge. Uh, 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 which is significant in terms of savings, you know, uh, uh, for our importers and exporters at the same time. But of course, we concluded the negotiations of this protocol with the United States in, in, in the end of the last year. So we still need, you know, to internalize the protocol, uh, which of course takes uh, uh, some time, uh, perhaps uh, two or three months more in our case. Uh, and according to the to the rules that we have negotiated with our American counterparts, the the agreement, the provisions uh, that we have in the, in this protocol must be implemented in two years. So we still have time. But of course, the 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 the, the bilateral uh, dialogue mechanisms that we have with the United States will be very much important. You know, in order to let's say to guarantee. The, the implementations, the implementations of all the provisions, you know, uh, 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 belonging to the to this to this protocol. We have already uh, had some preliminary conversations with our American counterparts in this regard, and we hope to include for the next meeting, you know, for the next meeting that we will uh, uh, schedule with our American counterparts uh, uh, for the bilateral dialogue. We will uh, touch upon, you know, this issue. 
and we'll try to accelerate the implementation of this protocol. But before we need to internalize, there is a political process that we must uh, 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 follow, and we will take perhaps two or three months more, even even less, even less than this, maybe. That's excellent. I mean, it's, these ongoing processes are where the changes are going to take place, and it's good to know that this is just a continuing process of improving uh, on both sides of the equation access for for goods and services. Yeah. Uh, let me, let let me just just let, oh, uh, let me add something, Steve. Uh, there is a very important, uh, uh, let's say, feature uh, in this protocol that I would like to highlight. Basically, uh, uh, more than 90% of the provisions that we have in this protocol are not best endeavors as usual, you know? Because if you are talking about best endeavors, maybe, maybe the provisions will never be implemented. So most of the provisions, more than 90%, they are mandatory. That's a very important uh, point that I would like to highlight. That that's that, very important. Thank you for for uh, reminding us of that. Um, since I'm sure it's been a little while since everybody read their way through that protocol. Um, let me turn to the you you mentioned a free trade agreement with Canada, and I have a question from uh, one of our members from uh, Ford of whether uh, the auto sector will be included in in uh, a Canada FDA with Mercosur or if you're working on this bilaterally. Uh, or is the auto sector going to be included there? For sure, you know there will be there will be no exceptions. You know when it comes to this agreement with the with the Canadians, we will include uh, the the automobile sector for sure. It's a very important sector uh, in the Brazilian economy, and we believe you know the competition brought about by this agreement in the automobile sector will benefit. The, the Brazilian automobile sector and also the Brazilian consumers. So this is very important. It will be included. And we will also try to go deeper in other areas of this agreement, especially in the case of services and investment. This is one of our priorities. Fantastic. Let, let's turn to Mercosur for a moment. Uh, you mentioned that there's going to be this, uh, that they're negotiating that you proposed a 10% reduction, I believe, across the board. Did I hear that correctly? Uh, there's a summit next week. I mean, is it possible this is going to be something that's done there? I have a question from one of our members, Gabriel Trabad, uh, about whether that might be possible. Uh, well, we are going to have uh, 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 the presidents, the, the four presidents of Mercosur will meet uh, uh, tomorrow, yeah, uh, in order to celebrate the 30 years of the block, yeah? So this is, we'll, this is the, tomorrow will be the birthday of Mercosur. Uh, Mercosur is now a 30 years old block. Um, and by the way, we believe as Brazilians, uh, I mean, I'm talking about the Brazilian, the current Brazilian government, we believe that Mercosur uh, um, um, didn't work uh, as a, a real tool you know, uh, when it comes to the to foster the, uh, Brazil's insertion in international trade, I'm just going to give you an example. In 1991, when the Mercosur when the, when the, the Mercosur Treaty was signed, you know, Brazil uh, uh, participate Brazil's participation in international trade was just 1.5 percent. If you go uh, to the statistics and you see the figures now you see that the Brazilian insertion, the Brazilian share in total in global exports is basically the same, you know? So uh, we believe the, 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 the free trade area that we have in Mercosur is a very important free trade area. But of course, we are not happy with the current rules that we have in Mercosur nowadays, especially when it comes to the uh, obligation to negotiate Free trade agreements in block, you know, as a block, including the four members, we would like to give more flexibility to these rules. We would like, uh, uh, for instance, that countries in Mercosur could negotiate the agreements uh, uh, individually in case they will, yeah, uh, uh, not uh, 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 with this very strong restriction to negotiate as a block. 
And if we would like to reform the common external tariff, then I go back to your to, to your question. Yeah. Uh, according to the to to our uh, let's say our uh, first proposal in 2019, Brazil uh, uh, would like to reduce the common external tariff, the average of the current uh, of the common external tariff by half, to cut by half. Yeah. So nowadays. The, uh, the the average that we have for import tariffs in Mercosur is uh, uh, nearly 11.5%. Uh, we believe that in order to be aligned with the rest of the world, the common extent, the average of the common external tariff in Mercosur should be around 6 or 7%. But of course, this is a very sensitive issue inside the block. We need to orchestrate this movement. That's why we propose it, you know, just let's say as a, a signaling of goodwill among the four partners to have a 10% reduction, the reduction across the board. Yeah, uh, we have proposed uh, this uh, 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 reduction. We have been discussing with our trade partners, and we believe that sooner uh, uh, than later. They will accept this proposal, and perhaps in the coming month, we will have uh, this redu reduction approved by all the four partners. But it doesn't mean that we will stop there. You know, as I said, our goal is to go deeper in the negotiations, and perhaps by the end of the next year, uh, the Mercosur, uh, 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 as a bloc, will have a blueprint with a clear, you know, uh, 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 chronogram, you know, to reduce. Gradually, transparently, you know, and, and with predictability, this common external therapy, but with a significant reduction, you know. So, for the moment, 10%, perhaps another 10% by the end of this year. You know, it depends on the reforms going on in Mercosur uh, and also in Brazil. But uh, what I would like to say is that we will not stop there, you know, not only 10%, we want more. That's that's so important. Uh, you know, Mercosur has so much potential, and I, I think most people agree it has not lived up to that. So it's great to see Brazil taking uh, leadership on that. Uh, let Let's turn to some international uh, trade issues. Um, I'm getting a question, a very detailed question on on uh, air uh, on uh, airplane. Manufacturing obviously Brazil has an interest uh, in what's going on between the U.S. and Europe on a global level. Uh, Brazil is a manufacturer with Embraer. What is what is Brazil's view of of what's happening on on a sort of global level in in terms of um, aircraft manufacture and and that industry? Well, Brazil has, of course, we have a very important Brazilian company here, Embraer. Uh, we have we meet with member executives frequently. We believe this is a very important company for our country, especially because uh, 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 it's a very uh, 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 this is a model company. You know, when it comes uh, to what we would like to see, you know, uh, uh, in terms of the other. Uh, 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 companies that we have, you know, in our manufacturing sector. This is a very uh, uh, it's a deeply integrated uh, company uh, in global value chains. This is a company specialized in in, in high uh, uh, in high in, in very uh, sophisticated, you know, services. Yeah, basically, it imports a lot. You know, the foreign content embedded. In a typical airplane produced by Embraer, Embraer is nearly 90 percent, you know, which is uh, uh, very uh, common when it when you look at the other companies like Boeing and, and Airbus. They are very much integrated into global value chains. Uh, we have been discussing with them, uh, and it's of, of course very important uh, um, export credit. You know, we need to guarantee export credit for for this kind of uh, companies, but of course, export credit uh, inside respecting, you know, the rules, you know, the WTO rules. Uh, uh, we have been discussing also this very important topic, uh, uh, as I said, respecting the rules. 
Uh, and we believe that, you know, in the coming future, we would like to see Embraer as most integrated as possible in the global economy. That's all, that's, that's, that's all uh, what I, I can say uh, uh, for the moment. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, obviously, these are complex uh, issues. Um, let, let's stick, you mentioned the WTO. Let's stick there for a minute. I just have a general question, which is what, uh, what do you see? What are Brazil's priorities as we have a new head of the WTO, uh, as the WTO is looking to sort of re-energize? Um, what prospects do you see for global on global trade? Uh, what concerns does Brazil have? Um, what are Brazil's priority on the, on the global trade front? Well, Brazil, uh, um, in our in, in, in my view, I'm, I'm going to tell you about my view, uh, of course, you asked this. Uh, we think the WTO is very, very important, you know, for uh, multilateral trade. Uh, we would like, of course, to see reforms, you know, uh, uh, at the WTO. Uh, over the last 30 years, we have witnessed, you know, lots of uh, significant changes in the way companies do trade internationally. So uh, we need new rules, you know, to govern this kind of new globalization that we have seen over the last years. And, and we, we keep, you know, seeing changes, significant changes. For instance, now uh, the trading services is very important, you know, uh, 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 and we don't have, we believe we don't have rules, you know, uh, at the WTO uh, that are compatible with this new kind of trade that we have nowadays. So we need reforms. We need to tackle the issue of subsidies. Uh, we believe this is important. We need to uh, 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 resume discussions regarding the, 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 the appellation body, you know, uh, uh, at the WTO. Uh, uh, and we need a WTO that is strong, that is uh, modern and that has flexible rules to accommodate, you know, the change that we had over the last years. And more than this, we need to have rules that are really accomplished, that are real, really, uh, 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 that, that, that has the power of enforcement, you know, somehow the power of enforcement. That, that's the rules that are significant, that can induce countries to uh, implement the necessary change, you know, to adequate to the rules of uh, of the WTO. Uh, thank thank you for that. Let let's return back to sort of what what Brazil's doing on the home front. We get a lot of questions, and I have some here on the agricultural sector, particularly uh, agricultural imports. Um, what Brazil can do to to sort of make it easier for those importers, increase transparency and and uh, the ability of of importers those from our group or exporting to Brazil. Uh, what is interested on interesting for you on the agricultural front as you export and as you import, what measures can Brazil take short of these trade agreements to increase and improve the trade conditions for uh, on the agricultural side? Well, frankly speaking, uh, uh, Steve, uh, uh, the most significant barriers that we have in Brazil for the imports of agricultural goods are regulatory by nature. Yeah, so uh, we are talking about, for instance, SPS measures, sanitary and phytosanitary measures. Brazil, uh, as, as many other countries, as even the United States and even, for instance, the European, uh, we, all, we are all heavy users of those measures, and we need to tackle this uh, by discussing, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, conformity assessment, you know, regulatory convergency. Uh, this is easy to speak, but it's much more difficult, you know, to implement those agreements. They are very, very complicated. But I would like to highlight that the issue of uh, uh, trade facilitation, you know, the first annex of this uh, protocol that we had negotiated with the, uh, with, uh, with the United States, it includes a lo lots of provisions, you know, when it comes uh, 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 to facilitating the imports of agricultural goods. So I would mention, for instance, you know, the, 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 
the validity, you know, of exchanging uh, 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 digital certificates. Uh, the I, the e FITO, for instance, is, is, is included in the agreement, uh, a mutual recognition of the authorized economic operator programs that we have, you know, uh, uh, both in Brazil and the United States. And also they use, it's also, there are provisions for this in the, in the, in the, in the trade facilitation annex, the use of new technologies, state-of-the-art technology, digital technology, artificial intelligence, you know, in order to approach, you know, the bureaucracy involved with the imports of agricultural products in both Brazil and the United States. So this is, uh, uh, um, uh, I hope when the, the protocol is implemented, uh, we will have, uh, 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 we will of course not solve the problem, but we will at least uh, uh, improve the situation, you know, in comparison to, to what we have now. Thank you. It's so important to underline that, 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 that so much of what causes trade barriers are these regulatory practices and that this agreement with the United States and other agreements are really aimed at getting to that level of regulation. It's not just a question of tariffs, although tariffs matter. I was reminded by one of our colleagues that the tariffs on, on automobiles are 35%. I remember when I was in Brazil, the car I bought for $30,000 in the US was $120,000 in Brazil. So yeah, is there any way to deal with that? Sure. Or is Mercosur, do you think Mercosur is going to look at doing that? Obviously, it has huge implications for domestic production and for other things. But what do you see the automobile sector being able to, to sort of open up a little bit more? Uh, yes, uh, we do believe that uh, uh, we need to uh, 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 to have a, 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 a a better or not only uh, perhaps a more integrated automobile sector in our economy. Uh, I would say more. The, the biggest problem that we have in the automobile sector in Brazil uh, is the number of automakers that we have in our country. Uh, we have over 20, 25 automakers in Brazil. And according to the size of the Brazilian economy, in order to have an efficient scale, we would have, we should have maximum seven or eight automakers in our economy. This is not to uh, 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 default, uh, it's, it's, I'm not saying this to blame the automobile sector. Uh, to be fair with them, I should blame the previous governments in Brazil because of the industrial policies that they implemented and gave extra incentives for company to install their uh, uh, factories in Brazil, uh, uh, not because of, uh, uh, let's say, competitive reasons, you know, but uh, uh, because of artificial incentives that were, uh, 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 let's say, offered, you know, to those automakers. So there is a big problem in terms of scale. So, and, and then we need to open up new markets for the Brazilian automakers in order for them to increase their exports. And of course, we need to open up our markets for imports. And I also believe that the tax reform, all the reforms that are being carried out, you know, by this government in terms of, uh, I mean, devoted to the improvement of the Brazilian business environment, we will also help, you know, the, 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 the automobile sector in our economy. But first of all, we need to tackle the high, the very high import tariffs that we have in the sector. Uh, we, nowadays, the import tariff for the automobile sector in Brazil is 35%. So we need to tackle this, we need to approach this, and we need to reduce, not only uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, bilateral negotiations, I mean, trade agreements, are, I'm talking about the most favored nation uh, tariff, you know, the MFN tariff, yeah? So we need to, to, to open up not only for uh, 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 agreements, but also for the whole world. You know, we need, a, we need to have a competitive sector in Brazil. Uh, thank you. Uh, we're, we're running short on time because I want to give Ambassador Forster an opportunity. But let me ask one question that, again, is not one last question for you, uh, Mr. Secretary. It's not directly related, but I remember when I was in Brazil, 
all the problems of getting things to port to export and then all of the ships queued up to try to get into ports to, to actually bring in the imports is the infrastructure issue uh something that's that's going to be able to be dealt with um what is briefly i know that's a huge question but briefly you know is there a plan to to try to fix some of those infrastructure related pro problems regarding trade Yes, I think this is one of the priorities of our uh, Ministry uh, uh, of Infrastructure in Brazil. Uh, uh, when it comes to our side, uh, what we are doing regarding uh, uh, um, uh, this, the issue that you mentioned, uh, uh, I would like to, for instance, to highlight, uh, because of course the infrastructure is a problem, as you said. We need to improve the infrastructure and uh, I think that the Ministry of Infrastructure is doing a good job on this. But we can do more. From our side, for instance, there is a big problem in terms of competition, you know, when it comes to international trade. For instance, if you are talking about cabotage services inside Mercosul, you know, this is a very, very much pro uh, uh, protected, you know, services, you know, in the region. So, for instance, in the case of our agreement with the Europeans, for the first time in history, Brazil opened up, you know, uh, the cabotage market uh, in Mercosur for the European vessels. And we hope and hopefully we will do the same uh, uh, with the other agreements that we are planning to do in the coming future. So we need competition for cabotage services uh, in order to reduce, you know, freight costs uh, uh, for Brazilian importers. But regarding the issue of infrastructure, I'm not aware of all the measures because it's not related to the Ministry of Economy. It's more, you know, from for the Ministry of Infrastructure. But I'm sure, I'm positive, our minister he is very much aware of this problem and he's trying to do his best. Well, uh, obviously, key key thing. Thank you so much for. Uh, your generous uh, time and answers uh, to all of these questions. I have about an hour's worth more of questions that are lined up, which we're not going to get to today. That would be far too generous. But I do want to turn now to Ambassador Forster and ask him to unmute and uh, give you the opportunity, Ambassador, to share with us your views on, on these issues. Thank you, Steve. Good morning to all. Let me just thank the Council of the Americas, uh, Susan Siegel, Eric Farnsworth, uh, our good friends there for organizing this conversation. Also wish to congratulate uh, Secretary Lucas Ferraz for that outstanding presentation on our foreign trade policy. Uh, let me just start by uh, echoing, Steve, what you said at the outset. You know, I've been a career diplomat for 36 years, and I have never seen in my professional experience a moment when we had this sort of alignment between what the private sector wants to do in Brazil and what the federal government is willing to do, you know, working together uh, towards opening up our economy, liberalizing our trade uh, policies. And of course, that, you know, helps a lot in our dialogue with great partners such as the United States. Let me just, uh, you know, just provide a little bit of context from uh, uh, what uh, uh, Secretary Ferraz mentioned on what we're trying to do bilaterally. Uh, as, as he said, one area that we have, uh, you know, great potential is to co to continue to cooperate, to work together at a multilateral level uh, in organizations such as the WTO. Both both our countries are very much committed to WTO reform. We both agree we need a very strong rules-based international trading system. So that that's an area with great potential, and we should continue to work together with that with the new administration. Uh, you also mentioned, I mean, uh, the, the whole question of agriculture. And again, both the U.S. and Brazil are two agricultural powerhouses. So we play a great role in food security around the world. And I think we should continue, uh, you know, uh, looking forward and uh, moving forward, continue to work on promoting the science-based agriculture uh, around the world and opening up markets and, you know, getting rid of, of barriers for, for both uh, our exports and for everybody else in, in agriculture. But let me just concentrate a little bit on, on the, the bilateral scene. Of course, we never, uh, you know, Ambassador uh, Thai is just, uh, you know, uh, arranging her office there at the USTR, and uh, we are ready to engage with her. We already have phone calls scheduled and so on. And, uh, you know, we will be tackling the day-to-day the, the -day agenda very, very soon. Uh, I just like to, to echo here again what uh, Secretary Ferraz said, because I think that's really important. 
of you know what we've done recently in terms of the, the three uh, trade protocols signed last October and how we see those as stepping stones moving forward. Uh, of course, we see the political situation here, the you know uh, upcoming expiration of uh, the trade promotion authority uh, later this year in a couple of months, and uh, you know that the, the, the conditions might not be set, might not be given uh, to do something in the short term in uh, what we've been calling you know a, a, a more ambitious, a deeper uh, uh, economic and trade cooperation between our countries, a free trade agreement uh, of some sort. But we should, you know, not let this uh, item fall off our agenda. It remains a priority, and the priority comes first and foremost from the private sector on both sides. Uh, I hear from all uh, trade associations in Brazil, and the Secretary has very, very much highlighted that, and we hear the same thing here in the United States, and including from council members, that, you know, the interest remains very high on seeking this which quite frankly, I, I think, you know, I think it's just between ourselves here. I know this is on the record, but it's a bit of a shame for the two largest democracies, the two largest economies in the Western Hemisphere, never to have had, you know, the capacity of negotiating a free trade agreement. I think it's about time we realized that full potential. It might take a bit longer. We should keep it in the agenda. And let me just bring a, a, a tad of good news about that. You know, we, we here try to, to work a lot with our friends on the Hill, of course, on both sides of the aisle. And we've been hearing very good things from our friends, uh, as I say, from both parties in support of this more intense, this deepening of our trade relationship or trade and investment relationship uh, between Brazil and the United States. So I think we should keep that on the agenda, bearing in mind that, you know, this comes in a framework in a, in a very uh, peculiar moment in international relations, where the fact that we share deep rooted values for both our societies, both our countries, such as democracy, the rule of law, the respect for human rights and economic freedom, uh, that goes a long way in bringing us together. So we should continue to work together with, with that agenda. And one last thing I want to mention is that we have, uh, the U.S. will be hosting uh, later this year, I've heard uh, talks that it might just happen in the beginning of next year, the Summit of the Americas. And uh, the topic that's on, on the top of the agenda there is democracy. That's fundamental. And as I said, that's a, a, a value we both treasure and we should continue to work to promote it in our hemisphere and beyond. But aside from that or, or beyond that, I think we should also add a component, an economic component in the Summit of the Americas. Uh, you know, uh, profiting from the whole discussion of nearshoring, of bringing uh, uh, supply chains and value chains uh, closer to the U.S. and to our hemisphere. So I, sh I should we think I should uh, consider having uh, you know a very strong fine, uh, investment and trade component for the Summit of the Americas. And we would appreciate very much if the council uh, uh, would uh, find in its uh, in its interest to support it. Uh, that, that's what I would have to say. It's just you know I want to provide what I would say it's, it's a positive outlook from what we're doing in the trade and economic agenda bilaterally. Uh, of course, we are engaged right now in, in also in a big discussion on what we can do together on the environment. And uh, it, that's been very constructive. There's a positive outlook for that, for what we can do uh, in the upcoming Earth Summit that was being, was being organized by the Biden administration. And of course, in the, in the COP26 in November. So the, the outlook is positive and we should continue to work together. And we very much appreciate the role played by the council in supporting this very vibrant uh, bilateral agenda. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, you will not have to twist our arms to get us to support an investment and trade component to the next uh, Summit of the Americas. Uh, I believe uh, anyone in the U.S. government would tell you they've already heard from us uh, multiple times that that has to be there. We're big fans of democracy. We're big fans of open markets. We're big fans of Brazil, uh, So, uh, as you know. So uh, it's so exciting to have heard from you, Mr. Ambassador, from you, Mr. Secretary, about all the things that Brazil is uh, doing on the trade front. Uh, we really uh, uh, want to support you. We look forward to continuing this dialogue. Uh, Secretary Ferraz, I hope you'll come back and uh, because uh, I feel like we just scratched the surface uh, of, of this topic. Uh, so we'll find another time to have you back and, and continue this discussion. And uh, before we close, I want to make a plug for two of our upcoming programs. We're going to have the Director General of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture uh, in a program on uh, April 6th. And then, of course, our Washington Conference on the Americas is May 4th, virtual, free this year. 
So uh, I hope you all will uh, register and join us for that conference as well. So with that, uh, thank you again, uh, Secretary Faraz. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thanks to all of you who came today. And we wish you a good end of the week. And we wish you every success in uh, improving markets and trade. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.